If you're watching this video, then you probably suffer with some kind of social anxiety or maybe you know somebody who does and you're here to try and help them. So in this video today, I want to share with you exactly how I overcame my social anxiety. And if you stick with me to the end of this video, I'm going to walk you through that process and share with you some simple tips for how you can start to overcome social anxiety today. Now I'm going to split this video today into three parts. The first part is going to be how I actually develop my social anxiety. Then I'm going to go into what I did to beat my social anxiety. And then finally, in the third part of this video, I'm going to be breaking down the most important steps that I took towards overcoming social anxiety. The things that you can take away from this single video today and start to apply them in your life to overcome social anxiety. So if you're ready to learn how to do that, then make sure you watch this video all the way through. If you enjoy it, make sure to leave a like on the video because it really helps to boost the video inside YouTube's algorithm to reach more people and affect their lives in a positive way as well. And of course, if you're new to the channel, make sure that you hit that subscribe button so that you can keep up to date with all of the latest videos that I'm putting out on a regular basis, all geared towards helping you to achieve your freedom through confidence so that you can become the person that you've always known that you can be. So a lot of my social anxiety initially came from having a super strict religious upbringing. And what this meant was that I, became aware from a very, very early age that I was fundamentally wrong or that I was broken and that no matter what I did in life, there was nothing that could ever stop me from being a bad person. On top of that, throughout a lot of my childhood, I was shunned as being somewhat untoward and I never felt that I could be myself. So I had to constantly keep kind of pushing my feelings down and burying the person that I was even from a very, very young age. And so from that very, very young age, I developed extremely low self-esteem and that over time led to social anxiety because the two are very much linked. If you don't have a sense of self-worth, then you're not going to put yourself out there socially and develop those skills. And those kind of situations are going to be scary for you over time because you think that you're not actually worth other people's time or you're just going to drag everyone down or you're a bad person or this or that. On top of all that, I never attended normal schools. The churches that we went to encouraged my parents to homeschool us, to shelter us from the dangers of the world. And of course, that led to me really struggling socially because I didn't really interact with other people my age, except for my brothers and my sisters. And as you probably know, that would not give a lot of room for social growth. And so because of all that, I grew up feeling like an outsider for most of my life. And when I finally got into school, I started to realize a few things about school pretty quickly. The first thing is that school was not like the movies. I wasn't going to walk in and loads of people would want to be my friend and they were there. People were there to, you know, help me and support me and this and that. Everyone was there for themselves. And I didn't know that that was the case about the world yet. I also quickly learned that it didn't matter how academic I was in school. It was all about the amount that you fit in with other people. And that was when I discovered that I was not a popular kid. I wasn't going to be a popular kid. Of course, I would actually find out a lot later on that I wasn't nearly as unpopular as I thought I was. This was all a reality that I created in my mind. Eventually, I managed to form some friendships with some people who are also kind of on the social outskirts of school. These are people that I actually still remain friends with to this day. They were massively instrumental in helping me to overcome my social anxiety by showing me that not everyone in the world is you know, a, a bad person, that there are people out there who are just genuinely nice. So yeah, I remain friends with those people even to this day. I even met my first long-term girlfriend from that group of people. Um, we'll get to that a little bit later on in this video as well, how all of that came to an end and affected me in various ways. 
But then school ended and I went to college and that was where my social anxiety really just took complete control of my life. When I was in college, my social anxiety was so bad that I couldn't even bring myself to interact with other people outside of the classroom. Even inside the classroom, I was as quiet as I possibly could do. I sat towards the back so I wouldn't be noticed. And during my breaks, I would hide inside the bathroom stalls until my next class, sometimes an hour, an hour and a half later, just because I didn't want to have to put myself in a situation where I could potentially have a panic attack in front of several hundred complete strangers in the cafeteria. My only real place of confidence during that time was in my drama class uh, because I was encouraged to express myself and how I really felt there and it was more or less a supportive group of people. Again, this is something that we'll get onto as one of the main tips for overcoming your social anxiety. But this group of people, they, they also really helped me to start to express myself a little bit more, even though it was in that very protected and safe space, as a lot of drama clubs tend to be. And during that time, I was asked out by that girl that I spoke about earlier, the one that I met through the, uh, my group of friends at school. And we dated for about 18 months. It was amazing. I really felt my confidence starting to build. And then, uh, as you'll probably have guessed from what I kind of insinuated earlier, uh, I kind of out of the blue got dumped just before I went to university. I suppose it wasn't really out of the blue, it was a long time coming, uh, but I didn't expect it. It happened and I was totally devastated. And this was where my anxiety and developing depression really hit a low point. So I got to university and I was now at one of the lowest points in my entire life. I was discovering that I really hated myself and who I was and I had this sense of self-loathing that followed me everywhere and it just bled out into the rest of the world. Um, rejection was very, very common for me in terms of, you know, um, social groups and girls and things like that, it was very, very common for me just because of the kind of person that I was. I remember uh, one time I was in a club and I wasn't even trying to talk to these girls. I was trying to get through the really crowded club to get to the bar to get myself a drink and the one of the girls took one look at me and just put their hand out and just said, no, walk away. Uh, and what could I do? Um, looking back at it, that's actually really funny to me. Um, it was obviously it was devastating at the time. I was like, I'm just here to get a drink and I'm being rejected without even having said anything yet. Uh, but to be fair, it wasn't really surprising giving, you know, the way I used to dress before. I'll put a picture of the way that I used to dress back then. It was an absolute tragedy and I can't believe nobody told me. Or maybe they did tell me and I just didn't listen. Uh, that's beside the point though. Um, just as a side note, it's great to be able to look back on your past and laugh about things because laughing about things really does rob them of that negative emotional power. So I can look back on past rejections and mistakes that I've made and kind of laugh and cringe about them a little bit, but that power that they held over me for all those years is gone now. And that's one of the big reasons that I am not 100% free from social anxiety because no one ever is, but I'm more free from that than I've ever been in my entire life. And that's why I want to share these experiences and more in these videos and on this channel, which of course you should definitely make sure you're subscribed to. But nevertheless, throughout university, I fell deeper and deeper into depression and anxiety and self-loathing and even into self-destructive behaviors such as drinking a lot and self-harm and so much more that is um, way too much to go into in this video alone. Maybe it'll be a video for another time. Although I keep saying that whenever I talk about this. Now, it was around this time that I discovered self-help uh, and it pretty much came from Googling what's wrong with me and trying to find answers from there. And once I had found those answers, I realized, well, maybe I can just use Google to find out the answers to everything else, such as how to get a girlfriend. And 
that was when I was in a place of almost total desperation. I didn't know what to do, but I figured that if everyone else had things figured out, that I just didn't know the rules of the game, that if I could find out what those rules were, then I could learn how to control it and get myself to a place that I wanted to be, a topic that I have recently spoken about in my video on how to deal with control issues. Um, make sure that you check that out once you finish this video. It's very insightful on how to overcome your control issues in life. And so trying to find out how to get a girlfriend through pickup artists uh, of course went as badly as I imagine you would have expected it would have gone, but it helped me to understand that there was actually a way that I could improve my life, that I didn't have to be the person that I was forever. And it also helped me to understand what I discovered would be my life's purpose, which is helping other people who have suffered with similar issues that I have, whether that be social anxiety or lack of confidence or low self-esteem or whatever it is. I discovered that it was my purpose to help those people to attain their freedom through confidence, though I would it, it would be a very, very long time until I figured out exactly how to do that the way that I'm doing it now. Anyway, I dived into what kind of ostensibly became my new religion, which was self-help. And over time, I had this growing sense of superiority that, you know, I'm out here improving myself and no one else is. Uh, it's a trap that's so easy to fall into with self-help is that sense of superiority and narcissism. And I fell into that trap hard. And of course that didn't help me a whole lot socially or psychologically. And eventually what really shook me out of this was having a conversation with a girl that I really liked and I wanted her to like me too. And I was just talking about self-help and the way that I felt about myself and the way that I felt about everyone else in the world, which was not at all in a positive light. And she just straight up told me that if I kept on behaving like this, that no one was ever going to love me. And that hit me like a ton of bricks. A really harsh thing to say, but I absolutely needed to hear it. And again, this goes towards a later point of finding the right people in your life, the people that will tell you the harsh truths things that you need to hear but you're afraid to say to yourself. Of course that forced me to really confront what was going on in my life and I was realising that actually nothing had improved. I was still suffering from social anxiety, lack of confidence, low self-esteem, panic attacks, depression, anger issues and so much more. And this was where I decided that I actually wasn't helping myself. I needed to actually find the correct way to do this. I needed to get help. And this takes us into part two of the video, which is how I actually overcame social anxiety. So really there were three things that I did that helped me to overcome my social anxiety. Now the first one was going to therapy. I cannot understate the positive impact that therapy and counselling have had on my life on the whole. I went into therapy really not believing in it, thinking that nothing was really going to happen. I went there because my dad suggested that I do it, that I go to therapy for my anxiety and yeah, I just didn't expect anything to come of it. So I was defensive, I was probably a bit rude. Uh, I was self-centred in the sessions, although it's therapy I suppose you can be a little bit self-centred, but to my surprise it really helped and I was only supposed to go for about eight sessions, that was what I had originally agreed for with the therapist. I ended up going for about 18 months, uh, which was 16 months longer than I thought that I would go and it really helped me in so many ways. It was so impactful on my life when I discovered that I had gone throughout my entire life wearing a suit of armour, not letting other people in, wearing a mask and not letting people see me and keeping myself in this protective bubble because I was afraid of getting hurt or of getting rejected or of just feeling pain. And through the process of therapy and counselling, I was able to uncover a lot of issues that were holding me back. And what was most impactful was that we never looked at the why these things happened. We always just looked at the fact that they were happening and how we could get past them. 
and together we we did that we worked together and i was able to overcome panic attacks a lot of my social anxiety a lot of my low self-esteem i was able to patch things up with my family i was able to go out there and start making more friends i was in an amazing place in life so that was one thing that really helped me getting therapy getting counseling now the second thing is something that i've alluded to in this video quite a lot and that is creating a powerful support network and what i mean by this is making the right friends and creating a family for yourself the people that will be there for you no matter what the people who aren't afraid to tell you harsh truths the people that are there to support you and that will back you up and who will help you develop into the kind of person that you've always known that you could become now the last thing that you want is to become dependent on those people so to build a support network you have to find that fine balance of support and also independence you have to still make all your decisions yourself but know that there are people who will back you up that there are people who will help you if you need and for me that is my family that is some of my close friends i have picked up from uni that same friendship group that helped me during school all of these people are part of my support network and that support network continues to grow as i put myself out there and make new friends and i expect that this network of people will only continue to grow over time so i highly recommend starting to put together a support network i've put together a video on this a few months back that I'll link in the description I'll have it pop up above my head in the banner as well on how to create a support network for yourself and other videos on how to emotionally support yourself so I'll leave all of those in the description down below for you to check out later on but this is something that is worth its weight in gold if you can get involved with it and build up a support network for yourself highly recommend it and the final thing was discovering real self-improvement to this day i will still read practical books on self-improvement i've moved away from the more fluffy self-help books towards the practical side of things which is where i believe the real change lies i started to understand the importance of self-love and self-compassion forgiveness self-acceptance friendship and most importantly actually taking action towards achieving your goals because when you can take action on your goals and achieve your goals you are over time solidifying that belief in yourself that you can do things that you can do positive things in the world and it doesn't matter how big or how small that goal is every single time you achieve one it is a win and every single one of those wins builds your identity as a person who is confident a person that is a go-getter an action taker somebody who will make a positive change in their life and maybe in the entire world as well so actually going out there and taking action actively working towards improving my life through achieving my goals and learning how to accept myself and love myself and forgive myself for my failures and my mistakes was instrumental in helping me to overcome my social anxiety and the result of that was that i found confidence i was able to develop life skills I was able to develop friendships and most importantly I believe I was able to discover my life's purpose helping people just like you to overcome your social anxiety and develop your confidence and become the person that you've always known that you could be and that is worth everything to me so we get to part three of the video where I want to break down five simple steps towards overcoming your social anxiety and these steps if you take them and you work with them you will overcome your social anxiety in time so step number one i've already spoken about which is take action and when i say take action i don't mean take massive action i mean take small consistent steps every single day so many people in self-help talk about taking massive action and yes there's a time for that but most of the time the most important thing that you could do is just take one small step 
and then take another small step and another small step and you will be surprised how quickly those steps compound into huge amounts of progress, into huge amounts of momentum. Another thing that I've spoken about on this channel before. So just start taking small consistent steps every single day towards your goals and becoming the person that you have always known that you could be. Step two is self-love and self-compassion. You will need this because you're going to mess up. You're going to screw up. You're going to make mistakes. You're going to fail. And it's going to happen more often than you're going to want it to. And in those times, you have to learn how to love yourself no matter what. You have to learn how to feel compassion towards yourself so that you can forgive yourself from those mistakes and allow yourself to grow. Again, I cannot understate the importance of learning how to accept yourself and develop that sense of self-compassion. Number three is of course to get help, whether that is therapy, whether that is counseling, whether that is coaching or just speaking to someone supportive, get the help that you need to overcome your social anxiety. You will not regret it. It is worth every penny. Step four, I won't go into massive detail as I already have, that's build a support network, find the right friends, find the right members of your family, create the right connections and never stop growing that support network. Make sure that you are remaining independent, but that you have that support and that you are being the same for other people as well. Let them be independent, but be their support for when they need you the most. And the fifth thing is to never give up on wanting to overcome your social anxiety because the hard truth about anxiety is that it will always be there. In fact, it's a perfectly natural part of existing. It is only when social anxiety starts to get out of control and take over your entire life that it becomes a problem. But if you can develop the life skills and the tools to always stay on top of your social anxiety, then you have overcome it. You have mastered it. Remember, social anxiety is perfectly normal, but crippling social anxiety is absolutely not. And those are my five simple steps, my five keys to overcoming social anxiety. It's what I did and I know that if you take those steps, you work towards them and you work with them, that you will be able to do the exact same as me. Now, of course, if you're ready to make those changes in your life and start to improve your social anxiety and self-confidence and beat your low self-esteem, then I have a few things that will help you on that journey. The first of them is a short five page PDF booklet that I give away for free on my website. I'll have a link to that. It'll be the first link in the description down below. But in that book, I break down the seven secrets that will help you to achieve your confidence faster than you've ever thought was possible. And it also exposes a lot of the lies that people tell about confidence and how that holds you back and what you can do instead to accelerate your progress. The second thing is of course this channel. I am putting out regular videos on a weekly basis on how you can beat your social anxiety and create massive confidence for yourself and crush your low self-esteem and really become the person that you've always wanted to be and achieve your freedom through confidence. So if that's something that you're interested in, make sure that you are subscribed to the channel for more videos just like this on a regular basis. And finally, the third thing is that if you're wanting to accelerate that progress, if you want to achieve your confidence faster than you thought possible through confidence coaching, then make sure that you leave a comment down below or shoot me a DM on the Facebook page, contact me on my website. And I'm more than happy to discuss the confidence coaching with you. We'll set up a call and we'll discover whether or not confidence coaching is something that you need and if it is something that will be useful in helping you to achieve your goals in life. But otherwise, thank you very much for watching this video. I do hope you've enjoyed it. Make sure to leave a like and a comment, and of course, as always, to subscribe. And I look forward to seeing you in future videos here on this channel very soon.